No, that's not fine. Same with some bigger ones. Smart. Fine. Fine. Well, it's just the same as the boss. I mean, I could be signing anything. Yeah, but it, you, it just gets attached to the minutes. All right, we'll do something different. That's, I do that with every other board. Okay, but I've, I've, in my business life and all that, I was told never to do that. So all right. I was told by the law department never to do that. Uh, okay, uh, I got 702, and I'm going to call the uh, meeting of the library board to order. Um, first okay, official. Yeah, it's on. No, but nobody else is. Oh, Catherine said, said Catherine texted. She said she's running a few minutes late. Oh, okay. she's going to jump yeah. online. Okay. Is Susie coming in? My number. Okay. So she could end up joining in this too. Or coming in, you know, Austin could as well. Okay. The uh, first official act is to welcome our newest member. Congratulations to us <laughs> for having <laughs> you as part of the committee. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. Very that's great. And um, I guess we should all reintroduce ourselves. I'm Mark Springfield. John, you want to tell her who you were again? Uh, nice, to, nice to see you again. Um, I know we met, uh, what, a week or so ago? Anyway, John Solomon, yes. the director, is still new. I'm going to play the new card for a long time. <laughs> I'm Cynthia Keller. Mm -hmm. I'm not here. <laughs> and I'm Jeff Friesner with the department. Rihanna was also appointed, but I believe she's on vacation until next week. That's what Tracy told me. Yeah. Can you hear us okay, Susie? Yes? Are you muted? You're muted? Can you hear me okay? Oh, no, now, no. right yeah. now we can't, yeah. Okay. And, and you just had an opportunity to meet Jamie, the new member of the library board. You know, so we had okay. that online. Yes, yeah, and during the interviews, yeah. Okay, we've got one more uh, coming in when Catherine uh, is able to connect. Um, seeing no one from the public here, I assume we have no public comments. Approval of minutes uh, from 11-14, and 12-19. So, right, I, I think we approved one of the November ones last month, but I, I'm, I'm struggling right now, which was, we, it was a special meeting that we needed to approve, and unfortunately I'll have to push that one more time. Well, um, if I were like to sign these uh, things. Oh. Well, the, uh, well, We'll be good. I'll catch up with you and we'll type it on there or get that on there somewhere. Right. Um, but, but for uh, purposes of discussion, my, my memory had the 1114 meeting being amended. Mm -hmm. The 1121 we held off because we didn't have a hard copy or something to sign. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so we, my understanding is we had voted to approve the normal 1121 meeting, but we just didn't have the hard copy to sign. That's correct. And then, um, uh, is, let's see, well, we have a quorum. Is there a um, motion to accept the 1219 meeting minutes? I'll make a motion. And You'll I'll, probably I'll have second. <laughs> All in favor? Okay, so uh, that's passed, so we can sign that one too as well. Um, <clears throat> so uh, then let's move on and do our reports and information. Uh, John will we'll have you come up. There were a couple items that uh, we specifically asked you to talk about, so we can either cover them off the way or normally. Presentation or pick them up at the end, your preference. Yeah, just through the regular, wherever I would come in. So, okay. okay, now or? Yeah, do you, okay. do you have anything for us of a routine nature you want to get in front of the group? Um, I, as far as the sorter goes, I, there shouldn't be any change to the last time. That's actually happening on Monday. Mm -hmm. So, 
we're getting an automated uh, sorter materials handling, and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Last um, month, John, it was stuck in custom, it, so I don't know right. that. So maybe, the, okay, it did get held up, so that's, uh, it's on track now. Um, so they will be coming in on Monday, which is handy because we are closed. So a lot of the initial noise and construction will happen that day. Uh, they have to, of course, put hall, holes in two different walls, one that's in the lobby here through a concrete wall and one exterior so no materials can be returned from the outside um, and then of course the assembly and, and installation of the sorter and that we anticipate or they I should say they estimated taking I want to say two two and a half weeks um, to play it safe um, we are or we have extended all due dates for materials returned up through February 6th we're trying to discourage returns just to make it easier for everybody. Um, but while we're open, we can certainly accept them. Just not in the outside drops on the east side will be closed when the library is closed, which is not normally what we do. So you can only return during open hours. Um, but we're trying to, we're, we put out some a press release and some information about that to encourage the public to just hang on to their stuff. That's not my wife. Do. My wife got your yeah. information. Good. So, uh, so we're very excited about this. It's it's been a, a long-standing project. I'm only coming in at the end, um, and so we've obviously got that got through customs. And the last I heard, it was sitting in Denver waiting to come up here on Monday. Okay, great. So that's good. Um, Let me give you a lead-in on this next one. All right. On, uh, I'm sure people have been reading. In Paper that, that Boulder has discovered a methamphetamine issue in their library. Um, and it's also my understanding from reading the newspaper that they've shut down the restroom and are limiting future use. Um, and I'm not sure what they're going to do about their transient population and how to control that. Uh, when I read it, it just struck me that, boy, we could have the same thing up here without, without a, a lot of imagination to uh, envision how that could occur. And it, it it's probably a city issue because it's, it probably affects every building that there's that's open to the public. But since we're only here talking about the library, I thought we should at least ask you what your thoughts were and where you want to take that. Well, I mean, certainly I was aware of Boulder and other, um, it, it's come up in some other places, um, both in and outside of Colorado, so. Yeah, I think it's an able with that. Yeah, 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 speaking of which. Um, so what, what we are doing just out of really a, abundance of caution is to have some testing done here, not knowing if there's any drug use or not, but it just seems like if it's around in the county or elsewhere, we ought to just do it and see. So I think that's getting arranged for maybe next week. We're, we're at least meeting right? with the company. We're, we're meeting with the company yeah. that yeah. would do it. Someone from Is that the city wide or is that just the library? Just for the library. Just right now. Okay. And then um, do you know whether if you find something, how expensive that is to remediate? Is it cheap to remediate? I mean, they were talking some large dollars in Boulder, right? I think it would be expensive. That comes back that way. Well, I do have something to contribute here. Um, I, I work for County Public Health, and so I know about this incident with Boulder Public Library right. from a different angle. And um, one thing that I know has come up a lot um, is is that if we suspect or we're interested in finding out more <clears throat> about how methamphetamine use might be this library it might be a good idea to reach out with to somebody at public health and just have an initial conversation um, my understanding and I I'm not on the front lines by any means but what has been discussed in my presence was that the, that conversation did not happen in Boulder they went full throttle with testing and remediation it was perhaps unnecessarily expensive 
um, in regard to the levels that were found to be present. So just to cover all bases, if this is a, a path that we're going to go down, um, it might be a good idea to talk to somebody at public health. Um, and I could find out who, you know, what division or who that would be, but uh, to avoid getting locked into a certain process and expenditures that may or may not be warranted depending on the levels that are present. From your experience with Boulder County Health, do you have any feel for how costly the remediation is for this sort of thing? So I just know from reading what was in the media, the reporting on uh, Boulder County Library that uh, the remediation was in excess of $200,000. That's kind of a number that sticks in my head. And they're locked into now a, a schedule of retesting and, I don't know, some kind of maintenance or upkeep. I don't know what the, the plans are specifically for the bathrooms, but um, the levels might not have been um, high enough to, to just, they just went very heavy into the, you know. So, so what I read was that they were, they were gonna shut down some restrooms mm -hmm. and they were gonna, Come up with a system where they limited access or controlled access to the others that, that they were going to allow the, the public to use. But I don't, I don't have any more information than that. That they were working on a strategy to somehow control ingress and egress or whatever of, of, of people into the restroom, so they could figure out. Um, whether they had problem uh, patrons or not. I think security is part of that conversation too with Boulder, whether or not they would hire somebody who would be a security presence and perhaps rotate through the restrooms to just see what was going on. Anything else? <laughs> no, I mean, that's good information, but yeah. who are, who are Jeff, Jeff and risk management here arranged a conversation I think, with somebody. Yeah, the same company that had done their testing. But I will mm -hmm. share tomorrow with risk the, your suggestion about uh, Boulder County Public Health. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm glad you guys are on it. I just, um, I think it's probably potentially a bigger issue than just the library. Uh, do you have anything more for us, John? No, not outside of those two. John, I have a, I have a question. Uh, actually, is there any updates on fine, getting rid of fines? Yes. Have we, is that in process right now, or is that still, or like, is that enacted, or is that still in process, or kind of what's the status on that? The, um, so it's enacted. It, okay. That began officially January 1st, so we no longer charge right. overdue fines. They're no longer assessed. And we're, we're working on a marketing uh, plan to get that information out there. There are some other things we had to address within the city system before we were ready to do that, but as after the 31st of December, we're not charging. Okay. But, but we are going to make a push about that to let people know. Anything else for John? We're from John? Okay, I'll move on. Uh, friends, was there a friends meeting? I'm not getting any information. Uh, I don't them. think there was. Their next one is the 26th. It's a retreat slash meeting, which was something that got pushed back from December. I don't think they've had a meeting in between. Okay. But I can tell you they've scheduled a book sale oh, for <laughs> It's uh, now now to the twenty. Well, it's going to be the weekend of February fifteenth. I want to say. I can, I can update on that. Or well, if we if we uh, are able to get someone at the twenty sixth meeting, that should be. I will be there. You'll be there. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Take good notes. <laughs> 
Okay, I'll move on then. Um, Susie, do you have anything for us? Um, just wanted to throw it out there that next Tuesday is our open forum during council. Uh, five minutes per speaker, and the whole um, session is dedicated to uh, public input. Um, the other thing, we were supposed to have a legislative dinner with Representative McCormick and Senator Hawkins Lewis, um, but they both, I think one had, was only able to stay for a short amount of time and was going to be joining virtually, and the other one, she double booked. So we decided that since it's the whole council meeting with the two legislators, that we would postpone until we could have them both there the entire time. Um, and you know, again, you know, the topics that we were going to be discussing and we will address um, law enforcement uh, reforms, so criminal justice, mental health, housing affordability, um, help for the unhoused, the climate crisis, free school, gas and water. So we're covering a myriad of topics. Um, and yeah, and then the other one was we were looking at the draft and we provided Sandy Cedar with um, our input for our retreat, which will occur, it will be two days, March 10th and the 11th, Friday and Saturday. And we will be looking at our uh, work plan our um, goals and outcomes and just setting future future goals and does anyone have any questions for me and if i forgot anything <laughs> well i don't know that you forgot anything but i had a question and i'm not yes. sure, sure whether to bring it up now or into the old business but it relates to um discussion that uh that uh Council had with the feasibility consultant and uh, with city staff about um, the need to canvas the public. And I think the city was going to work on proposed questions um, to go forward and, and, and try and solicit the community's thoughts on the library. Have you heard anything more on that? I have not. I have not, but I can definitely ask. I think it was it yeah. been through yeah. Sandy. I think Sandy ended up with the ball on that, but I'm yes. Whether she I kept can, it, you know what? I I can, let me write this down so I don't forget. Yeah. And, um, I will follow up with Sandy and see where we're at with that. I was told earlier this week that they are working on those, and they I didn't have a date, but I'm I'm assuming it'll be soon that they'll be. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I would imagine if she hears from me, Susie, that'll help move okay. it yeah. forward on the calendar. Because mm -hmm. the, uh, the other shoe to drop on that is that we had talked as a group about um, hopefully being able to participate in um, either reviewing the questions or uh, commenting on them, uh, you know, trying to provide additional input to the city with respect mm -hmm. to the library. So are you talking about actually helping devise the questions or once the... I, I um, personally would be happy just critiquing what was already there. I, what was already there? Okay. That's, that's me personally. I don't see. Cynthia's shaking her head yes as well. Okay. 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 Yeah, I will, um, I'll send out an email to Sandy and kind of and find out or put in a call. That'd be great. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't have anything more for you, Susie. Does anybody else have anything they want to get your input on? So I, I think you're off the hook then. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip around the agenda because I want to do the old business before we do uh, these uh, items designated as new business. And uh, the primary discussion point, and it's really a carryover from our, our last meeting, 
uh, is the city's cultural and rec initiative. Can one of you guys help us out? Where are we at on this thing? We're in the same exact spot we were at last month's meeting. And trust me, I was very excited to get to come tonight to share that. Well, trying to speak in a very nice way, it is, it's hard to see that the city is serious about this. I mean, this is a, a big initiative for next this year, yeah. and nobody seems to be taking it seriously. I hear you. Susie? I think we need your help on this one too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, and, and yeah, this, I mean, and this I, one I just does. I'm going to set up a meeting with Harold on other topics and I will add this on as well. I mean, we're not the only ones screaming to have this done, I would hope. I mean, considering the wide swath of the community this, this uh, is affected by, but certainly the, um, the library is very anxious to um, understand what its future might look like under this proposal and we're just not getting this thing moved at all. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you anything you don't already know, Jeff, but there are timelines that the county imparts on this process that if you wait too long, you miss those dates. For the district, the county doesn't set the, the city council has till August to set the election for the city. I thought that this county had to improve the language on it. They might have to, I'm not aware of that, I don't, I don't. I thought that's what Boulder had to do. Boulder had to get their approval on the language for the, you know. The for the special back. district, because it was a, that really became a, it, well, they the don't. Same. It's the same, it's April, it's the first, first round that's when the city first looks at it and it's the same for your new tax or for district well, that's then, news to me i've it, not, never heard that and then august is when it actually has to be done right so Susan, I know, all i know is that of an august yes, due date that's what to i have that i that was the that was the month that stuck out in my head and i'm trying to think of other initiatives that we had um you know the tax increase for the um slaughter the um storm drain and I was not aware or it was not um, conveyed to us that we had to have anything submitted to the county as okay. far as for um, this kind of tax. And I, I'm assuming that this initiative, it, it's a tax increase just like the, um, the storm drain. Yeah. So, but, but then the, I will also ask Harold. Right, I, I'm not sure you're wrong, but I would think on something this big, the city would want to have legal way in and, and you know help with this map, this milestone mapping right. to say what needs to be done when. Right. Otherwise, it's just another indication that the city's really not serious that they're not engaging with your city, resources to make it happen. The city is meeting with legal counsel on language, how what questions can be combined, and how the wording would be done. I know that's happening. The city has a an attorney that they use uh, and get guidance for for all of their elections. Okay. So, uh, Mark, my understanding you were in the Boulder to, for a special district that that language did have to be turned into a county. It's my understanding earlier. that the, the county had to approve the language on the ballots. That was my understanding. Okay, so if there was a, a citizen movement for a district, then that would not, like those timelines would not, that timeline would be different than the city timeline, am I kidding? Well, no, I think I think the timeline to get the information on the ballots is the same right. for the party. Yeah. When we had the election for the pool and ice uh, three years ago, I don't remember having any conversation with the county of them approving our ballot question their involvement is the city working together to have the joint ballot so that the city's not sending out something and the county 
it's one effort together. Well, I'm, I'm willing to admit that I don't have all the information on this, but uh, again, I go back to the comments that if it's that important to the city, you would expect it to be all hands on deck for this to be successful. And I yeah. can. I'm, I'm talking, you know, I'm just telling you because you're the only one I hear to tell right. um, uh, that represents the, the that part of the city. Um, the other thing that I wanted to resurrect is this, we had talked about this last meeting, which was how do we protect the library going forward? And I think you were making the case, Jeff, that it had to be dollars on the ballot going to the voters, like X number of dollars for the library in perpetuity or however. Yeah. And the concern there was that circumstances change and that might either be overly generous or not generous enough with respect to the, to the library and the funding that the library needs to go forward. So I was, I was just trying to think through other potential strategies where you didn't have to name the dollar amount, but you could still indicate a, a magnitude and um, for ballot purposes, an estimate given current circumstances. So instead of a we need ten million dollars, uh, we would say we need X millage at this given present circumstances. But at least with a, like a millage number or a percentage number, you know that would vary some with circumstances and as values go up of houses right country. and and if if the city is tied into this strategy of trying to use sales tax dollars they could also peg sales sales tax increases in just decimal terms and, and you could accomplish the same thing because if, if things go bad for the city and sales revenues are down then consequently funding would be down but I just, I, and again, I'm not an expert in this. I think that becomes a different question as compared to if you ask X to build an, uh, a branch library and Y to operate it. So what, what I would like to offer up is inviting uh, Becky Doyle, who is one of the financial people involved with this, with the city, have her come to uh, your meeting in February to hear your comments and, and she's bet in a better place to be able to explain how property tax or sales tax, those kind of things uh, work. And uh, maybe I invite Jim Golden as well, the chief financial officer. Well, we would certainly appreciate the education. Yeah. The, um, it might be also good to hear from legal as to what the restrictions are in terms of putting dollars on, you know, dollars right. why, you know, maybe whether there's somebody from legal there or, or, or not from legal. My guess is probably not somebody from legal because for the question, the city is paying an outside attorney to deal with that. And then that's an expert in uh, giving guidance for elections. Do you know who that is? Um, not for sure. Is it Setter? No. So they haven't hired anybody from the outside on this. They've been working with uh, an individual. The one from Denver? Yeah. Yeah, that's one they've used for everything, though, not just this. Well, but he, he has specific, we work with him every time that we have an election. Yeah, I don't know about this thing. Well, okay, okay. I mean, it's great for us. I, you know, I would think. Without, without uh, usurping your authority, Susie, that it's something council would want to hear from too. I mean, if if the city and council are serious about this initiative, there ought to be things happening, and that doesn't seem to be the case. I As a well, citizen, I think too, it's I think. communicating that out to the public as well. Um, you know, so that's you know, how can we? kind of give updates to the community as far as where the process is. Um, 
you know, I'm sure that that could be done. I, I, I'll have to talk to Harold just too. I don't want to like commit staff <laughs> without knowing what your workload is at this point exactly. Um, but I think just even putting something on the website or just having that little basic community that people could come in and and check. Well, I, I was uh, thinking of something that Aaron, I think, mentioned when um, you all discussed the feasibility study, which was trying to build community support, not just from the library, but for, for all the, the interested parties in the overall tax initiative. And if you wait till the last minute, that's not very um, uh, indicative of, of building a successful strategy get this thing passed. Nobody will know about it and everybody will vote against it. That's and, all I got. And Susie, yes, Park and Rec Board and the Senior Services Board feel the same way. Okay. So we're not crazy. <laughs> it's just best that I Either way. Um, okay. Uh, does anybody else have any other thoughts on this particular item? No, I mean, once again, I don't think we can express any type of support or, or any response until we we have more information. Okay. We all wait. Uh, I, I apologize. That is not what I wanted to come here and, and say tonight. But it's, it's honest truth. Well, it puts pressure on you and your department as well. Yep. Yep. I mean, and, and all your colleagues, it's, it's just needless, uh, needless to rush, in my opinion. Um, I'll move on. Uh, Longmont uh, Library District, uh, once again, we're, they're going to wait, or uh, they have been waiting. I'm not sure whether that'll change given the delay in circumstances with what the city is doing. But today, they moved in. Um, try to sit and try to observe what's been going on. Uh, item D is election of officers in February. We talked a little bit about this last meeting that by the bylaws, there should be an election next month. Now that we have um, new members seated, uh, that's, that's a heads up. There'll be uh, chair, vice chair, secretary, and uh, depending on how we decide to do the terms of the library could be a rep there as well. So um, this is the spoiler alert. I'm not going to be here for February. Thanks. So um, so the meeting you of, the meeting I believe would fall on the holiday again. Am I thinking that's right? It's the what Monday? It's supposed to be the 20th, I think. Is that the I mean, third, is the third yeah. Pres president's yeah. day. Is that a holiday? Right. Yeah, it's president's day. So if we did this same thing again in February where we met on the Thursday before that, <coughs> would you be back for that? Or could we set it at a different time during the month where you would be here? Because I think we got to move it anyway. Well, it's great. It's great that uh, you're willing to accommodate that. And that was really, I think, part of your issue on your new business. But no, what my, it's a whole different. That's all. Uh, yeah. So it is the, the 20th is President's Day. Is, is this building closed? That doesn't affect me personally. It, it's yeah. a city holiday. It is a city it's holiday. A city holiday. Right. Okay. Yep. So. Okay, so for me to be in attendance, I, we would have to do it before the 17th. So Thursday the 16th, like we did this month? Um, I can do Thursday the 16th. 
Cynthia, does that work for you? Yeah, I can do that. Catherine, does that work for you? I couldn't hear it exactly. Uh, could you say it again? The Feb Thursday what? February 16th. So, oh, February 16th, um, yes. Double check team. I, Thursday nights are not as good for me as I thought they were, hence my tardiness tonight, so sorry about that. Um, but I can probably do something similar where I'm, as long as it can be hybrid, I can get on as soon as I can. I can do the 15th too, if the 15th is better. I can do the 15th. Can't really hear you, sorry. 15th is 15th better. Does it work for you, James? 15th any better, Catherine? Double checking. I think so, but I don't want to say yes and then mess up. 15th is better, but you don't have to change it for me if if the 16th is better no, for we're, we're changing it for everybody. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'll, I'll make a motion that we move uh, February's meeting from the uh, 20th to the 15th. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? You, Aye. Okay, so uh, it's unanimously carried. So, you know, we were talking a second ago about you bringing people to February's yeah. meeting. Hopefully this is compatible. Yeah, because I haven't talked to anybody. Okay, great. Yeah. And I'll, I'll have to work with you on the agenda as to how you yeah. want to do that. But, um, great. Uh, Mark, can we go back to elections quickly? Sure. I received an email letting me know that uh, uh, Stacy, she's here, Stacy. Stacy will be here in February uh, taking notes um, for the for the board. Uh, I wasn't sure if we wanted more detail about that or if that's a permanent change and if therefore if we need a secretary moving forward in this board. Yeah. I so I um, I talked to Tracy about that and. Um, it, I think it makes sense, and it's in her role and her purview to be the secretary for the okay. board. I, I didn't want to implicate her this week because I just talked to her on Monday. <laughs> but going forward, uh, she will be attending and be in record minutes and all that. And I think that's going to make more sense. That way, you're not trying to record and participate, or whoever else might be doing it. Okay. So that's true. How does everybody feel about that? Personally, I think that's Who's Stacy? <laughs> Who's Stacy? Uh, it's Tracy, uh, Tracy Steele, and she's the library's administrative assistant. And generally, this that type of thing would be in her in a role of Tracy. So, I she, she was agreeable to that. So, thanks, John. Yeah. From my perspective, I, I would be in favor of of that. That was the last. That was the model used on the last board that I was participating in. In every board I've ever been on to. There's usually a staff member that's the recording secretary. And for that reason, so that yeah. members could fully participate. Okay, well, um, if uh, I don't know if I need to pass a motion on that because it's um, adverse to the bylaws as they exist for this committee, which doesn't mean anything other than the fact that the bylaws need to be changed. But um, Which may need to be updated. It's been quite a while. It hasn't been that long. Almost quite a while. <laughs> Ten years. No, 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 no. We updated them a couple of years ago. No, I didn't get the newest version. Well, I'll... they're secret. What, 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 what <laughs> I do for <laughs> is I try to, have, <laughs> super yeah, try to have them looked at at least every three years. Okay, I, I, I think it's been a good three years. But were you on the board when we did that? No, so it must be right at. Three years, or is any of it on the board? Gosh, COVID threw me in terms of time. I didn't even on the board three years or four years at this point. Did we do that while you were here? No. Okay. Well, I, I'm sure it hadn't been that long. But. Okay, but it sounds like that will be a healthy effort as well, considering um, the change in the secretary. The bigger question is how do we haze new members if we can't make them take minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you bring that up next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You know, on, on a serious side, that um, I don't know whether you all feel the same way about it, but I felt that I learned a lot being forced to take the minutes as a member because you know, I needed to force myself to understand what the issues were and it kind of helped me remember um, some of the give and take in the discussions and that, but you know, that's just me. And we'll lose, well, Tracy will have that knowledge. Now. Well, you can still take notes for yourself if that helps you retain. It's not exactly the same. <laughs> Writing for the public and writing for myself or kind of be on the read it, right? Well I, I you're trying to make make it make sense for everybody, not just yourself. Right? It's a different thing. Which is not easy. Uh, okay, so um, I'll move on then. I think we've we've covered off the election of the officers for February. And we're now under um, your items for new business, yep. Jeff, John, you guys want to talk about that? Yep, I'll do that. So every January, each one of the uh, advisory boards are asked to, uh, by motion, designate their day and time of the month that they're going to meet um, and, and the location of where the meeting will be held. So. You can you can do this a couple of ways. So it also talks about where we post notice of the meeting. Generally, that's here at the library and on the city website. So if you all are in favor of that, you somebody could just make a motion to continue uh, into in 2023 to keep all of the um, postings the day and, and month the day and time of the meetings all the same and that will cover us for that. Okay, so and, and just to clarify that, when you're talking about postings, you're talking just about on the board. Out, out here on the board yeah. where the agenda and uh, yeah. the minutes get posted. Yeah. And what goes to the city, just the minutes? No, the city now uses uh, a system that's called uh, uh, agenda, agenda management. And all meetings of the city are posted on there both with the current agenda, and then the any information that might be sent out in a packet, and and the minutes are added the next month month after you've approved them. So all the minutes that you approve this evening, once we get those signed, those will get posted to that agenda management, so that any member of the public can go in and look at. Uh, what's been going on with any of the advisory boards. It's the same location as where all the city council meetings are posted as well. Okay, so are, is what we've been doing with respect to agenda, is that been satisfactory to the city? Yes. Okay, yes. so they're okay with yeah. that aspect of it as well. Yeah. So the, the present program is generally okay, it's just, just formalizing it. Yeah. Each year? Yes, each year. Each, year. each January, we're asked to do that. Clarifying question. Mm -hmm. um, do we also put um, a posting uh, on paper anywhere in the city office? It, it, it goes on the entryway on the west side as well over there. And do we list the event itself on the library's online calendar? It's on the city calendar. But not which the library's is, Well, it's, I mean, oh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> Are they different? Not really. Okay. It's, it's, it's more like on a, a filter view. So if you were as a citizen to go look just on the city's calendar, you'll see everything. So that would include library events and library, I'm sorry, and meetings. But if I'm going but, through the library website and I yeah, look at your event calendar. So that may be, and that's what I'm not sure, that may be filtered to just programs and events right. on our end. Um, so I can look and see. So we're really seeing a layer yeah. of the city yes. that we're bringing in the city's calendar. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have experience in that regard when you were trying oh. to figure out how how <coughs> Met and things like that where you won the library's calendar and were um, you satisfied? 
I didn't go through the library's website to find out information about this board. I went through the city website. And this is, I'm just new and getting used to um, a city where the library is under that umbrella. Um, so it makes sense to me the way it is now. Um, and it depends on our strategy if we wanted there to be a greater awareness, a more general awareness of this group and its work. Would there be a benefit to having it um, more visible in the library's calendar? I am on the library's calendar right now, and um, it is not over here. It's okay. the Office of the Library at all. It can do it, but the we don't have a choice of not using the city system to post that. Yeah. It, it, we're directed that that's how we have to do that. But anywhere else, we, we can certainly, yeah. if nothing else, say seven o'clock tonight is the you know, library advisory board meeting. We may get more attendance from the public. Yeah. You know. Especially when yeah. some of the stuff gets public. Right, that's a good point. So I think the question does seven o'clock on the third Monday that still works for everyone. Well, let me let me uh, throw in some additional information. Maybe a year ago, two years ago, when Scott first came on the board, he had a problem with the fourth Monday of the month um, because it represented a conflict for him, and the board moved to the third Monday. If we're going to do this. Do we have a position as a board? Do we want to go back to the fourth Monday? Do we want to keep it where it's at? Does it matter? Well, it seems Maybe people want to weigh in. I can't be there on the fourth. No. You, you cannot. No. Have a golf board meeting in that. So we should move it to the fourth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. John, John is helping heavily to be here. I feel like we do get hit by the federal holidays fairly often on that third Monday. Yeah, I also have a fourth Monday conflict for um, about half the year. A conflict is a struggle and a clash of interest, opinion, <laughs> or even principles. Conflict will always be found no in society, as the basis Scott, of thank conflict may vary to be personal, racial, you know, like, class, caste, political, <laughs> and international. Does, Should I keep going? No, no. 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 Is I apologize. Does uh, this is a question because I am just new enough to not know. Does it have to be on a Monday? I know you wouldn't do it on a Tuesday, obviously. It, it would not have to be no. And does but, it have to be at seven p.m.? Is that regulated by the? No, that whatever oh, works for everybody. I'm just wondering if a time change would be convenient to anyone. I I couldn't do much earlier, but six thirty actually works. Is a start time for me um, a little bit better than seven. Mm -hmm. I can do that. I have a intricate series of childcare okay. situations that are currently set up around the Monday, third Monday, seven o'clock thing. But uh, you know, again, I can try and figure those out if it's much better for others. No, not much better. Just a tiny bit better. I'm fine sticking with the third Monday at seven p.m. That seems yeah, to work and, well. And I, I, I mean. I don't really feel I should have a voice in this because I don't plan on attending many more of these. But um, if um, you, you all want to keep it the third Monday this year and see how it is next year, you're welcome to do that. I'll give you a whole year to think about it. Yeah. So could we have a motion that says we'll keep the meeting uh, third? Third Monday at seven o'clock at the library. I motion that we'll keep the meeting the third Monday of the month at the library at seven o'clock this evening. Yeah. Second. All in I didn't ask you, Susie. I hope that's okay with you. Catherine, were you speaking or just voting? Because you're muted. No, it, it works for me. That's fine. All right. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry to. I was. Oh, I was just trying to ask if what we had decided about offering the hybrid option. I know we said we were going to do it for the next couple of months, but do we have to make a decision about that in terms of this also? Nope, we can keep it this way as long as you all want to do that. Great. Okay. 
Okay. Does that give you what you need? Yep. Then? That's good. And please make sure that gets in the minutes and your last official act. Oh, one question. When they, if they were to put the link like to the hybrid meeting on the library calendar, do you think it's safe? You know, because I've been in meetings where things have gone horribly wrong. No, we. If we're, if we're going to open it up, it, it's a whole different process. Right now, only you, only us in the room are, are invited to join on Zoom. If, if we wanted to make it uh, a, a public meeting where people could call in, we will have to get uh, other folks to help us monitor that uh, to, to get them in. What's the thought on that from the group? My first thought is it, it seems to work this way to have to keep Zoom only between this board and then of course members of the public are welcome to join us here in person. I'm typically a fan of meeting in person because I just think you have a better meeting in that regard. So um, I understand that given you know the, the way of the world now the uh, hybrid option is more flexible, but I'd, I'd rather just see us meet in person. Yeah, I think for me the question is just, you know, if we're saying it's open to the public and it's a hybrid meeting, are we, is it not honest of us to not make it truly open to the public and provide that link, or is it okay to not? So my preference would be if, if you want the public to be here, we couldn't do hybrid anymore. Uh, I just, it just is too, too much, too many staff hours to make that work. And then it's not live either. It's generally still recorded. There is a way to do it live, but it, there's generally just the city council and the planning and zoning done that way at this point in time in COVID. It was done prior, but most most boards are, are going back to uh, hybrid like we're doing or in person. I'm fine doing it this way. I agree with Cynthia, but I just want to make sure that it's all, yep. you know, above board, I guess. If the public wanted to come, they could come here and still uh, interact with you and, and Susie. So do you think it's fair then to say that the board will continue to um, add a Zoom option for board members as needed on a monthly basis? Right, yes, yes, um, yep. for our situation, yeah, please. Yep. Um, that we continue to monitor whether that's necessary or not anymore. Okay, I think we've gone through uh, the agenda as I understand it. Does anybody from the board have any additional comments they want to make? Susie, do you have anything you, you want to... You know what? I forgot to mention um, the ward redistricting. So we do have a meeting, and I wrote it down over here. There we go. Um, later this month on the 28th at 10 a.m. at the um, Civic Center. There uh, from 10 to 11.30, there will be a work redistricting open house. So we're looking to redistrict our um, board one, two, and three boundaries. So if anyone is interested in attending or offering feedback, um, please come. Where did you say that was, Susie? I'm sorry? Where did you say that was gonna be conducted? Um, it's on the 28th Where? of this month at 10 a.m. at the um, City Hall. City Hall. Yeah. Okay, very good. Anybody else have any comments? Thoughts? Welcome again. Appreciate you joining the board. With that, uh, I'm going to call the meeting in adjournment at uh, 7.56. Select best, please select all.
Thanks, everybody. I wasn't going to say anything. Thank you. Thanks, Tara. Thank you.